The Scorpion and the Frog Originally written by Aesop, 620 to 564 BC Updated over 2500 years later by a certain Mr. Aesop Once upon a time, in a galaxy quite close, there was a beautiful blue planet. On this beautiful planet, there was an ugly country. But this story is not about that. Rather, it is about an ordinary country with ordinary people. This country was divided in two by a very wide river running through the middle. And in this river were two big islands called Adolescence and Adulthood. The south shore of the river was called Infancy, and there lived all the people who had had only moderate success in their lives. The population consisted mainly of babies and young children, although there were some adults as well, especially those who liked being with young children, but we don't want to um, touch on them. The north shore of the river was called Maturity, and that was where all the very successful people lived. They too had been born and started their lives on the south side, but had worked hard and performed many good deeds and had managed to cross the river, which had a rather curious name. It was called the River of Public Opinion. And here is a little map of the place we're talking about. In South Shore's infancy, then we have Island of Adolescence, and then an Island of Adulthood, and then the North Shore Maturity. And running through there is the River of Public Opinion. It's a strange little country, isn't it? But let's not worry about names for now. Let's get into the story. When you were of age on the South Shore, you could obtain a boat in order to cross the river to the first island, Adolescence. Now the current in this part of the river was not very strong and the boats were made of wood so there was not a lot of danger but, and this is a big but, you had to keep doing good deeds in order to keep the boat afloat and thence get to the first island. Not everyone managed to do this however and sometimes the boat sank and the people had to swim very hard to get back to the south shore, infancy. However, once on adolescence you could rest for a few years in order to rebuild your strength and plan your next series of good deeds. When you're ready, you could get another boat, this time of cardboard, and go to the second island, adulthood. There again, during the trip, you had to keep doing good deeds in order to keep the boat afloat. Some people, though, were scared of getting into a boat made of cardboard or didn't think they could do enough good deeds, and so they decided to stay on adolescence. Those who took the cardboard boat and made it to the second island were usually very tired when they got there, and so they tended to stay there quite some time. It is on this second island that we will meet the two participants in our story. But first, we need to meet them. One fine day, Mummy Scorpion, living on the south shore, gave birth to 20 babies. But because she was a very hungry Mummy Scorpion, she ate 19 of them, and kept just one, which she called Flower, as she liked Wolfsbane, which was rather poisonous. Flower was a very spoiled scorpion, though she didn't realize it, and went from day to day with friends doing things for her until she found someone else who could do better things for her, and so she dropped her old friends. She had not done many good deeds in her life, but nevertheless, one day, Flower decided that it was time to move to Adolescence Island. She wanted to get to the North Shore as soon as possible and be a success and have many people doing her bidding. She was quite a selfish little bitch, really. So she stalked and then married a man and together they got themselves a wooden boat. The man took the marriage very seriously and luckily he did enough good deeds for the both of them and soon they arrived at adolescence. Once here, Flower got bored very quickly and wanted to keep moving on. She got her marriage annulled and married another man further up the social scale. She tried to convince him that they needed to change islands, but he was not sure. So she explored other avenues, 
and other people explored hers. By sleeping with all the right people, and some of the wrong ones, she managed to get a part in a TV series. These people were easier to convince, and they got a boat big enough for them all. This boat, as usual, was made of cardboard, and the river had more of a current, so they had to work harder to keep it afloat. Luckily, the cast were able to do many good deeds, which rebounded on flour, and soon the boat, with the whole cast, arrived on Adulthood Island. The final boat voyage to the North, I North Shore is the most perilous one. The river current is very strong, and the water can be very choppy. And to make it even more perilous, the only boats which are available are those made of paper. So, you can imagine that even more people decide to stay on Adulthood Island as the risks are so great. But every day Flower Scorpion came down to the river and looked across to the North Shore, maturity, and swore to herself, I'm fucking going to get there. I fucking want it. I fucking deserve it. She really swore a lot for a Scorpion. While she was growing up, and making her way to adulthood island, there was another person doing similar things. About the same time that Mummy Scorpion was giving birth to her flower, there was a mummy frog who was laying several hundred eggs in a small pond on the south shore. Daddy Frog then came along and then came over the eggs. So much for romance, eh, Daddy Frog? Not even cinema and a meal first. One of these eggs grew into a tadpole and then into a frog which his parents called Chimpo, because, well, just because. When Chimpo was of age, he decided that he wanted to go to Adolescence Island. Now, as you know, frogs are very good swimmers, so they do not need to use boats, but they still need to do good deeds in order to cross the river. So his granny frog arranged for him to be a toy soldier, and he played at being a soldier for a little while, and that was good enough for him to get to the island. Chimpo, too, was impatient to move on to the North Shore and to have all the benefits of a life where you could do what the hell you wanted. But he didn't know what sort of good deed he could do. Luckily, one day, he saw injured American soldiers competing against each other and decided to steal the idea. His granny frog gave him permission and arranged for him to be surrounded with people who knew what they were doing so he could just be a figurehead and give patronizing speeches whenever he wanted. Nevertheless, this was considered a good deed, and for once he almost thought about people other than himself, and so he was allowed to swim to Adulthood Island. Now both Flower Scorpion and Chimpo Frog were on the same island, and they both had the idea of moving to the North Shore, but both were unsure about what good deed would allow them to get there. Time went by, and both Flower and Chimpo met people and used them, as was their custom. One day they met <coughs> accidentally and immediately fell in lust. Flower recognized that Chimpo the frog would be able to carry her over the river. So there were no worries about a paper boat, and Chimpo liked blowjobs. He was also smart enough to keep well away from her sting. One day Flower asked Chimpo if he was a good swimmer. Chimpo replied that of course he was. So Flower made her proposal. In that case then, Mr. Chimpo Frog, would you be so kind as to ferry me on your back across the river? We can say that our good deed is to modernize the frog family and we can work together to do it. Just imagine, we will get married and have lots of money and power and money and influence. What you say, babe? Knowing, however, that scorpions had a bad reputation, Chimpo replied, well now, Miss Flower Scorpion, how do I know that if I carry you to the North Shore that you won't try to kill me? Flower Scorpion replied, Hold on, Thicko. Uh, sorry, Chimpo. Just think about it for a minute. If I try to kill you, then I would surely die as well, for as you know, I cannot swim. Now that logic seemed to make sense to Chimpo after he had uh, thought about it for 20 minutes or so. But still cautious, he asked the scorpion, well, what about when we get close to the bank? You could still try to kill me and get to the shore by yourself. 
Ah, Kroon Flower, the scorpion. Because you see, once you've taken me to the other side of this river, I will be so very grateful for your help that it would be very unfair of me to reward your service in that cruel way. Plus, you haven't experienced a full roast chicken yet. <laughs> nudge, nudge. So Chimpo the frog finally agreed to take Flower the scorpion across the river. Flower crawled onto the frog's back, digging her claws into the frog's soft skin and clinging on for dear life. Chimpo slid out into the current and began to swim across the final section of the river of public opinion. Remember its strange name? If not, go back to the beginning and start again. You guys. Um, <clears throat> okay, back to the story. The water swirled around them, but the frog stayed near the surface and the scorpion clung on tightly so she would not drown. The frog kicked steadily across the strong current, but then halfway across the river, Chimpo suddenly felt a sharp pain in his back, and turning to see what it was, he saw Flower removing her stinger. A cold numbness began to creep into his limbs, and the frog, still carrying the scorpion, stopped swimming and began to slip below the river's surface. You fool, croaked Chimpo the frog. What have you done? Now we shall both die. What happened to our plan to modernize my family? We should be drowning in money, not in the river of public opinion. Why on earth did you sting me? Flower the scorpion gave a shrug, and as they both sank below the turbulent water, she replied, I could not help myself. It's my nature.